Our mighty Father, we give you praise. We thank you so much this evening for great, great opportunity you have given unto me to come and speak your word before your children. Thank you for gathering us together in this place for the blessing that you want to bless us tonight. I pray this evening, Jesus, that you will bless us, that your word will come straight unto us and bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Holy Spirit to put his anointing upon us. And I trust the Holy Spirit to put his words in my mouth and give me your trust to declare his mind unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, I just quickly want to say that, uh, just as I said, I'm very grateful for the words that uh, the invitation given to me to speak this evening. I want to implore us all to be very, very patient and hear the word. And I, and then um, I think the best way to do this is just for the admin, administrator, the host, to, to, uh, to mute everybody except me. So all of us will be able to hear very well and there will be no distracting noises. That everybody should be muted and then accept me. And then, then we shall be able to hear very well. Because I trust the Holy Spirit that this thing that the Lord has brought before every one of us through our dear brother and his ministry is a great platform and there is going to be a big platform that the Lord is going to use to steer us all up and to steer us up and to bless us and to open our eyes and to enlighten us and to spark revival in the lives of so many people and to, and to impact upon this, upon this country that you have and, and, and upon our various individual countries. So the words given to me to speak to this evening, briefly, within a short time, I have a very short time given and I trust the Holy Spirit to bless all of us. And the word given to me to speak is an outpouring of his spirit. Outpouring of his spirit. I, I monitored the prayer session, very, very powerful prayer session. The words of God have been declared from it as an introduction to what the Lord wants to do through this program. I want to implore every one of us that we should not despise a program like this. I want to encourage every one of us that the Lord used different types of means at this end time to visit his people. Different types of means the Lord uses to visit his people. He uses different types of methods and uses different types of servants of his to visit his people. And this one, I believe, is not an exception. The Lord also has chosen this one to visit his people. And therefore, I want to encourage us that we should, we should open our mind and be ready to be blessed by what the Lord will do through this program. It depends upon how prepared your heart is in a program like this. You know, people can follow the Lord. People can be in the midst of a huge program where the anointing of God is flowing. And if the heart is not prepared to tap into what God is doing, a person can be there and still come back the same. But I pray for every one of us that we shall tap into the blessing that is hidden in this program in the mighty name of Jesus. When people, a much, much of people are following Jesus, they were following Jesus. The Bible called them a great multitude following Jesus Christ. But in the midst of that great multitude, people that were pushing Jesus left and right, in the midst of that, Jesus Christ stood still suddenly, I said, and he said, he, he said, I felt virtue go out of me. And then he turned back and then he turned to Peter. He said, who touched, somebody touched me, who touched me? And Peter was amazed and said, who touched you? In the midst of all this crowd, who touched you? When people are pushing you left and right, who touched you? That this is a massive crowd. Jesus Christ repeated and said, somebody touched me because virtue got out of me. That is, Jesus felt that somebody had drawn power. Somebody had tapped into power in him. Somebody had contacted power in him. Jesus felt it and he stood still. 
So it means people that were pushing Jesus, Jesus did not feel anything. The crowd that were moving Jesus, Jesus did not, did not feel anything until a woman contacted the power. If the woman did not even touch the body. He didn't shake the hand. He didn't push Jesus. He only touched the hem of the garment. Do you know why? The woman said, the Bible says, for she said in her heart, if I may but just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. That was the, that was the intention of her heart. That was what she said in her heart. She prepared her heart to touch and then she believed she shall be made whole. I therefore come to you this evening and I said, in this program, in this night, in this, in this program that is not just a long program, but within a short time that this program we hold, what is the purpose of your heart? When our brother was speaking, he was speaking with passion about God bringing revival upon drama ministers in UK, bringing revival upon young ministers in UK, stirring our heart. And he was speaking that with passion and that is the body God has given unto him. God gave him that body and, 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 and started this program. But, and then the program has already started. And then in the midst of that program, what do you propose in your heart? So I just gave the illustration the other time. I said crowds were following Jesus. A massive crowd of people were following Jesus. But Jesus did not wait for any of them until just one person contacted power. Until just one person activated some power inside of Jesus and then Jesus stood still. So it means, it, it means Jesus Christ can stand still for you tonight if your heart is prepared. That woman said, if I may just touch the end of his garment, I shall be made whole. That was the, that was the heart of that woman. So what do you intend to touch in Jesus tonight? Are you, are you, do you just intend to be in the midst of crowd without contacting something? May I tell you, brethren, at pouring of his spirit, according to Joel chapter 2, verse 28, it says, and it shall come to pass afterwards, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters sh shall prophesy. Your old men shall drink dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Verse 29 says, and also on my main servant, that is God speaking, he said, my main servant, and also on my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days. That was in the book of Joel. Then in the book of Acts, when the anointing came down, when the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost, Peter reminded the people and said, this was what the Lord said in the time of Joel. Now it is coming to pass. And so Peter said in Acts chapter 2, verse 16, he said, but this is what was spoken by prophet Joel. That is thousands of years ago. Now it is coming to pass in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. He said, this is what the Lord said by prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, I will, says the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. Then verse 18 said, on my men servant, and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. That was, that was the word of God. That, so, so Peter reminded the people and said, The Lord has said this thing several thousand years ago. Now it is coming to pass, right from the day of Pentecost. So Peter said, He said, I pour out my spirit. The Lord said, I pour out my spirit in the last days. And so Peter said, now the thing has come to pass. So right from that day of Pentecost, we entered into a realm of outpouring of the Holy Spirit's power. Right from that time, we enter into one realm of outpouring of His Spirit. But do, may I tell you, or may I not tell you, that the time we are now is the very, very last days of the last days. This is the end time. This is the end time. This is the last day, the tip end of the last days. We are closer to the end. We are the closest to the end than the time of Peter, than the time of the apostles. We are the closest to the end. And at the closest to the end, at the closest to the end, the outpouring is becoming more heavier. The outpouring is becoming more heavier. The, so let's now take note of what the Lord said because the outpouring is getting more heavier. The outpouring is coming, becoming more evident. The power is becoming more evident. The Spirit of God is moving 
more heavily than before. Why? Because this is the darkest of the night. This is the tip of the hen time. This is the time that so many things are beginning to happen that has never happened before. If Peter said it was the last days, this is the end of the last days. This is the end time of that last days. And so at this end time, the present time we have, there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. What, what, what the Lord said in the book of Acts, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That is, there shall be an outpouring. There shall be an outpouring in the last days. So presently, the way you are sitting, the way I am, at this time, there is an outpouring already. There is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit already. The outpouring, the river is flowing already. The power is manifesting already. There is a shower of the blessing already. There is a shower of the power of the Holy Ghost already. Now, don't let us be deceived by all what is happening presently. The pandemic, the crisis, the virus, the, 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 the calamities, the violence, all the problems everywhere around us, they are all agenda of the end time. They are all parts of the programs of the end time. In the book, in the word of God, in 2 Timothy, in, the, in, 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 in 1 Timothy chapter 4, chapter, verse, from, from verse 1, he, he was speaking and the, and the word of God was saying, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come, men shall be lovers of themselves, they shall be violent, they shall be wicked, they shall be haters of good things, they shall be disrespecters of parents, they shall be inventors of evil things. So, all the things we are seeing presently, all the move of immorality that you are seeing presently, all the move of the wickedness you are seeing presently, all the move of the violence you are seeing presently, they are all agenda of the end time. They are all erad. They are all, they are all erad. They are all the, um, they are all the, the forerunners of the, of, of the sound of the trumpet. They are all forerunners. Of the, of, 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 the, of the coming of Christ. They are all foreigners of the rapture of the saints. And so, this is the tip of the end time. We, are, we have come to a time that is very, very, very unpredictable. We have come to the end time that is very, very unpredictable. Now, in the midst of that end time, in the midst of that end time, the word of God declared, just as Peter said in the book of Acts, he said, behold, this is what the Lord said by prophet Joel. That if you come to pass in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. When the agenda of the devil is that iniquity shall abound, love of many shall wax cold, many shall fall by, 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 by the roadside. When the agenda of the devil is that the love of many shall wax cold, many shall fall by the roadside, the, 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 the faith of many shall, shall become weak. That was the agenda of the devil for this time. But the agenda of God for this time is that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh in the last days. In the word of God, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, in the, in the word of God, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1, he was saying the same thing, that the love of many shall wax cold. He was saying the same thing, that, 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 many shall, that, that, that the faith of many shall fail them. It was saying the same thing, that many shall be weak in faith, that there shall be falling by the wayside. And that was the all agenda of the end time. But in the midst of that, why many may fall by the wayside? Why the love of many may wax cold? Why iniquity may abound? The word of God is concerning the end time. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Do you now see? There are two agendas going on at the end time. So when you see somebody who was so strong in faith before and his faith becoming so weak, it is the wind of the end time blowing against him. When you see somebody who was so violent for God before, who was so versatile for God before, who was so agile for God before, who was, who was, who was filled with different type of gifts of the spirit before, suddenly getting cold, suddenly getting pressured out of the work of God, uh, 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 pressures pressuring him out of the work of God, a uh, 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 career taking his vision away from him, profession taking his calling away from him, duties 
taken his ministry away from him, when you begin to see that, it is the wind of the end time that makes many to wax cold in the spirit, that makes the love of many to wax cold, that makes many to leave Christ, that makes many to fall by the wayside. It is a wind. And in the midst of that, you must not forget that the Lord said, at that time, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, in the midst of falling away by the wayside, many ministers turning back away from God, many ministers, many children of God, many discrediting what they believed before, many children of God not believing again what they believed before, many children of God preaching against what they have preached for before, many children of God, their faith in Christ is waxing cold. What they are convinced of before, they are no longer convinced of it again. What they are zealous about before, their love has gone down and they are no longer zealous for it again. In the midst of that, when you begin to see all those things, the wind of the end time blowing, in that midst of that, don't forget that the Lord said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So there is an outpouring of the spirit presently from the Holy Spirit. There's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit presently flowing. There is a huge river of God flowing. May I tell you how? The reason is just that unexpected people are giving their life to Christ and they are preaching the gospel. It is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Why people who were so zealous for the Lord before, many of them are going that by the wayside. It is, it is the sign of the end time. So which side do you belong to? You must make a decision. As a child of God, you must take your stand. As a minister of the gospel, you must take your stand. The vision that is fading away from your heart before, you must search around for it and pick it up and keep running because we are at the tail end. We are at the time that the rapture can take place at any time and then everything is over. We are at the time that the trumpet can sound at any time and that is the end. We are at the time that everything can come to stand still and that is the end. May I tell you, brethren, last year, November, last year, October, who would have said that there is a virus that can change the mindset of many people? Who would have said that there is a virus, just one virus, just one plague that can change the timetable of the whole world? Just one plague that can disrupt all the economy of the people of the world? Just one plague. Who would have said that within a space of four months, there is a plague that will crumble all economy in the whole world. Who can say that one? How, how, is it possible? When we were saying Happy New Year, when we were saying Happy New Year in 2020, did we envisage on lockdown? Did we envisage lockdown? Did we envisage that there's going to be something that will happen and everybody will be locked inside and nobody will be hurt? And people, there was a particular time, people were being paid to stay indoor, not to come out in some countries. People have been paid. Can, can we imagine that that type of things can come up? Can we envisage it? That is to make us understand that we are at unpredictable moment. This is not the time to abandon your calling. This is not the time to abandon your vision. This is not the time to abandon your mandate. This is not the time to grow weak. This is not the time to go back. This is not the time to grow weary in faith. This is, do you know that we discovered something? That in the midst of lockdown, there was a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that? That yes, the lockdown, the pandemic, a, a lot of people died, sadly. A lot of people died. Sadly, a lot of people died during the pandemic. A lot of people suffered. A lot of people entered into a lot of agony. Yes, all sign of the end time. It was all sign of the end time. But do you know that in the time of the pandemic, in the time of lockdown, there was a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Some people were busy preaching the gospel at lockdown than when there was no lockdown. Some people were filled with several types of astounding revelations at lockdown more than when there was no lockdown. So this is for me, this is for you to understand that we are at the time. Everything happening presently, they are all signals of his coming. This is not the time, child of God, this is not the time to abandon your vision. This is not the time to abandon your calling. This is the time to sharpen your cutlass for work on the harvest field. This is the time to sharpen your vision and rise 
and arise and run with your vision. May I tell you that at the end time, that the, if the end time is so special to God, every child of God at this end time are special in his presence. Uh, I, I, I know almost all of us are familiar with athletics games. The one we see in the university when we're in the uni, the one we saw when we were in colleges, the one we saw when we were in secondary school, the one we saw back home in Africa or in our country, we are familiar with athletic games. Are you familiar with relay race? We are there is change of batting. Are you familiar with that type of relay when there is change of batting? I learned it when I was in the school by our game master that the fastest runners were those at the first leg and the, on the last leg are the fastest runner of the team. So that right from the start, the fastest runner will gain speed very fast. Ahead of, as many, uh, if possible, ahead of others. Gain speed. And then give it to the second runner. And then the second runner, give it to the third runner, the third leg. And then, perchance, there is a slowness. Perchance, the third leg was not able to cover some gap. The last leg also is the fast runner. So the fastest runner had the first leg and the last leg. Now, when, the, when we talk, when we come about the matter of the agenda of the end time, when the Peter said, now, this is the end that the what prophet Joel said has now come to pass. That was the first runner. Peter's were first runner. The church were the first runners. The apostles were the first runners. The disciples were the first runners. And then they ran, they pick, they run a race. They spread the gospel very fast. Time of Paul, he spread the, he spread the gospel all across Asia within a space of two years. It was a great speed. They were first runners. And then there was a calm down. There was a speed and there was a calm down. There was a calm down. There was slowness. And then we come to a time when there was a, the end bit of the race. And you, therefore, happen to be one of those people that God had selected to run the race at this end time. To run the race at the end bit. You are the last leg. I am the last leg. The baton has been given unto us by the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to run the race until he comes. I pray for you tonight that you will not die. You will not, you will not die, you will not be worried, you will not be weak. You will run the race until the end, and you will run fast until the end. You will not slow down in the mighty name of Jesus. So therefore, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, my time is very short, and I'm, 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 I'm running so much to the end of the world. And the key word, therefore, is that you are not a mistake at this time. You are not a mistake at this end time. Your coming at this time is divinely orchestrated by heavens. Your salvation at this time is divinely arranged by God. We are at the moment of outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The river is flowing. Unexpected people are getting saved. Do you, I had some astounding news from the, from the Arab nations. And it is amazing how the Arabs, some part of Arab nations, are getting converted. There was another news I read, some of us will have read it before, how rapidly the, the revelation of Jesus Christ is occurring to the Arab nations. We are hearing different type of news, how Jesus is appearing to people. <laughs> how, how Jesus Christ is appearing to people in their dreams, in Arab nations. How they are beginning to have a lot of astonishing experience and they are getting converted. There was even the news of, of, of nations like Iran. When the, 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 the bearer of the torch of evangelism there are women. The bearer of the torch are women. The people carrying the fire in some part of Iran, they are women preaching the gospel and they had no church. There was no church. There is no church. There is no building as a church. And so the, the, the evangelism is mouth to mouth. It is an underground church. There is no place where they gathered. I read the news myself. I read the evangelical report myself. And the message was spreading widely and they were preaching in the marketplace. There is no church, so they cannot be arrested. It's mouth to mouth. And there are women 
80% of those who are evangelists there are women. And they are preaching the gospel and the message is spreading so fast. Unexpected people, unexpected nation are turning to Christ. There was another picture, another video of another country in, in the Asia, in the, in the Asian, Asia, Asia, one of the Asian countries where massive crowd of people, Muslim nation, massive crowd of people turn to Christ overnight. <laughs> Unexpected people turning to Christ en masse. People you never thought would come to Christ are coming to Christ. You that have known the Lord several years ago, your, how can your faith weaken you? How can you be weak? How can you abandon your vision? How can you abandon your calling? How should career take your vision away from you? Why should, why should your profession take your ministry away from your hand? Why should your career, why should your, why should your work take your calling away from your hand? Many of us, we are, we are, we are forgotten our calling. We have forgotten the covenant we made with God. We have, we have forgotten the promises we made with God. We have forgotten the covenant we made with Him. We have forgotten the covenant God made with us. Many of us, the promise we made, when God brought us from wherever we were and placed us in the present position, we have forgotten. The devil is using different type of things to make a people forget God's calling, to make people forget God's vision, to make people forget God's covenant. To make people forget the call, the commission, the mandate. It's making a lot of people to forget the covenant they have made with God. It's making a lot of people to forget the vision they receive from God. The calling they receive from God. I am calling you tonight using this platform of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The anointing night of drama ministers. I'm using this moment to call you to say, come back. Pick your calling again. Pick your calling again. The Lord Jesus Christ said the statement that must not happen to you. He said at that time that, uh, that the first shall become last and the last shall become first. No, your, your, your first must not become last. Pick your calling again. There is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit presently. Don't say, oh, the temptation now is too hard. There is an outpouring for it now. Don't say, the pressure now is too high. No, there's an outpouring. There's an outpouring that Peter did not see. We are experiencing what Peter did not experience. We are, we are experiencing massive outpouring of grace. We are experiencing massive outpouring, massive outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit. What Stephen did not see, what Peter did not see, what our fathers of faith did not see in years past, we are beginning to see because we are the last leg of the race of revival. Pick up your calling. Pick up your vision. Let nothing is too big enough to, call, to take your calling away from you because that is your means of existence. That is your existence. See, your profession, your career, your work, the duties that you are doing, they are all complementary. They, they are to empower the real calling of God for your life. They are, to, they are to empower the calling. They are to complement the calling. See, your profession, your career, they are all platform for your calling to thrive. They are all platform for your ministry to thrive. They are all platform for your commission to thrive. Why did God create you? Why were you created? Why are you existing in a time like this? Were you created just to give birth to children? Take children to school, bring children back from school, work in a place, collect salary. Is that just the essence of your living? I therefore pray for you tonight that the Lord God will empower you. The power of the Lord will keep you. I challenge you tonight. Go to where you have dropped the call and pick the call. Go to where you have dropped the calling. Go to where you have dropped the vision. You are alive now because your case is not yet closed in God's presence. You are alive now and you are able to see this because your case is still open in his presence. Your situation is not closed. There is still room for you to run the race. There is still more ground for you to cover. You can still rise. You can still do the work. 
your star can still shine. In Isaiah chapter 60, he said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. When you arise, you will shine. The hand of the Lord will keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor and adoration, Jesus. We glorify your name. For your word has come out. Lord, we pray that this word shall steer our spirit. Holy Spirit, use this word to steer us up. Use your word to quicken our spirit. Use your word to wake us from our slumber. May we rise up and pick the walk and run with the vision again. Bless this program. Bless everyone listening. Bless all the participants of this program. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.